There's been a lot of buzz around Davos and the World Economic Forum Summit. One of the key subjects that was discussed is uh, the future of climate change and green energy. To speak about whether anything substantive has come out of Davos on this front, I'm joined now by Sumant Sinha, CMD of Renew Power, who's joining us from Davos. Sumant, thank you so much for speaking with us. I know it's uh, pretty much the wrap up of your stint at Davos this year round. What have been the big highlights in your view? Some of what we've been seeing in the headlines are MOUs that your company has signed with the states of Maharashtra and Karnataka. Let's begin with some details on that. Uh, yeah, Tamanna, look, I think, as you know, we have pretty uh, uh, good growth plans, The of course, in line with the Indian government's plans to add a lot of capacity in India. And both Karnataka and Maharashtra are two of the most uh, resource-rich uh, states uh, with good wind as well as good uh, uh, solar. And uh, our intention, as you know, over time is to develop uh, uh, projects where we can actually do green hydrogen as well. So I think our conversation with, with both the states uh, really has been around that to see how we can look at setting up uh, larger uh, hydrogen hubs in the future based around, of course, a lot of new renewable energy capacity. So I think that's really the focus of uh, those MOUs. So broadly speaking, climate change and renewable energy was a big theme across Davos. I want to ask, has anything substantial come out of it? The context of my question is that sometimes the impression is that Davos is a playground for the rich and famous billionaires meet. But what is the outcome? This is the context in which I ask you as you're leaving, what has been the big game changer regards climate change and renewable energy out of Davos this year? Well, you know, Tamanna, uh, first of all, I think it's a bit of an unfair description of the place here. When you come and see uh, the effort that, you know, one puts in to uh, be out and about, uh, I think the importance of Davos really is as a place for exchanging ideas, for a, as a place for meeting people, because everybody's here. Uh, so it's a very good chance to uh, really catch up on a lot of different views and inputs and so on. And uh, that's really what one has been doing over the last uh, few days. Uh, and I think that, uh, see, the value of it really happens inside your head because, you, you know, you meet a lot of people, uh, you get a lot of new insights. For example, for me, the real learning has been how Europe is so clearly focused now on the whole issue of energy security and how that is likely to impact a lot of energy policy making, how that's going to impact corporates. And uh, what I have to think about, for example, is how might that impact the energy markets going forward? And therefore, what kind of uh, strategic changes or strategic paths we as a company should be thinking about taking in the future? And so you get really very, very good insights for those kinds of uh, thought processes for strategic thinking and so on. So I think that is really the takeaway of Davos for me and certainly I'm sure for other people in other areas as well. And uh, the outcomes of this right. are things that we are then able to do in our respective businesses in terms of strategic thought process for the future. And so I think the consequences and the impacts of Davos are things that play out over a longer period of time. Uh, they don't happen immediately right here and now, at least not for me. Now, of course, policymakers get together as well and they must be discussing things. And perhaps for a lot of them, you know, maybe they, they are in a position where they can actually go back and quickly change uh, certain policies or tweak certain things uh, at their end. But I think it's, it's, it's a little bit unfair to assume and hope that everything will happen in the three days here because that's really a gathering time, a meeting time, and I think a reflection time, and then people go back and do the things that they have to do as consequences and outcomes. Sumant, so, uh, you're also ASOCHAM chief right now, and there is so much happening here back home, especially with the fight against inflation. I wanted to get your sense on some of these key issues that business and uh, industry are facing. First off, the kind of measures we've seen, excise duty cuts, caps on certain segments, including sugar exports and other duty cuts which have been put into place. Do you think this will have an impact on cooling inflation and how will it help businesses? Yeah, look, I certainly think it will have an impact on bringing inflation down to some extent. Uh, I think inflation globally is one of the biggest problems that uh, uh, I think uh, is, is a headwind for every country and every company as well. And somehow we have to find ways in our individual countries of tackling it. So I think the government's measures and steps are actually very welcome. Uh, of course, what it does is uh, that it will create additional demand for some of these products while bringing down inflation. 
so that uh, in itself might lead to it, you know, its, its own consequences of higher oil consumption and so on, which is fine in a sense because it will it will allow, allow the right. economy to grow faster. Uh, but of course, in other areas where uh, duties have been brought down, it might lead to a slightly higher uh, comparative dynamic for some of those industries. So uh, specific industries might get impacted one way or the other. Uh, but I think overall for the economy, certainly it's a very helpful and welcome uh, step that the government has taken. Let me come specifically from the business perspective, especially small and medium businesses. You've seen this situation of high input prices and the inability to pass them on all because of flagging demand. Do you see some of that pain easing? Yeah, look, I think uh, flagging demand is really not such an issue right now because, as you know, the economy is still growing in a fairly robust manner. So I think that's something that is still pretty okay. Uh, inflation, of course, is, look, is, 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 is very bad for everybody from consumers to uh, small corporates as well as big corporates. Uh, of course, bigger corporates have the ability through stronger balance sheets and so on to be able to deal with some of the consequences. Smaller companies have to take it on the chin very often. Sometimes they don't have the pricing uh, uh, advantage that bigger companies have. And so therefore, they tend to get a little bit more impacted by inflation and so on. So I think this is something that uh, I think the government certainly sees of this issue, which is why I think these series of steps were taken. So I think from a small industry standpoint, certainly it's very welcome. Thank you so much, Suman, for speaking with us and have a safe trip home.